Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Theology and Worship Podcast. We exist to equip worshipers for spirit and truth worship. Today, we're continuing the Will of God series, and I'm going to be talking about the idea of God predestining people for hell and God predestining people for heaven. If you haven't listened to part one and part two of the Will of God series, um, I strongly recommend it because it's kind of building a foundation for why I believe what I believe and why I think the way I think, and it really is talking about the will of God from you know a theological perspective or a study of the will of God, if you will. While I think that this can be a fun conversation, I also think that we ought to be aware that we're talking about people's destinies. We're talking about the destiny of a soul. And so, you know, I come at that with some sobriety. Uh, the idea that God predetermines our destiny and decides before we even take a breath that we are vessels fitted for heaven or hell, that's a sobering thought. A couple things I want to say before we dig in here is that, you know, giving humanity 60 to 100 years to make some certain decisions about their belief in Jesus or their ability to uphold the Mosaic Covenant, because really those are the ways to righteousness as far as I'm concerned. Jesus being the one that's accessible, the Old Covenant being the one that's impossible. But if you're really going to set that before man and give him only 60 to 100 years to get it right, that's an interesting uh, decision uh, by God. On the other hand, if you predetermine uh, whether you know these elect uh, are going to go to heaven or the non-elect, the sheep and the goats, whatever metaphor you want to use, um, then you know, and you're you're predetermining it, and you're an eternal being with infinite knowledge and infinite power. Uh, there does seem to be you know something to say to that. Um, meaning that, you know, God has the authority. And the kind of the way that I think of it is, you know, history is his story. He's the author of this story, and he's trying to tell a story specifically about the redemption that mankind has through one Jesus Christ and how he reconciles himself to the entire world, all of creation, to humanity. And so, you know, this part of his story is that there are good guys and there are bad guys. But I don't want to make this trivial or trite. Um, And I want to say that I really do lean on what I said in last podcast, that God determines things by foreknowledge. And that's kind of where I land on this. Now, the idea that God predestines people for for hell and heaven, it really, in my opinion, comes from a few passages. I'm going to try and deal with the top passage, which I think everybody should probably kind of have an understanding of. And that comes out of Romans 9. Romans 9, 22 says this. What if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory, even us whom he has called, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles. This is Romans 9, 22 through 23. And it seems pretty upfront, right? What if God willing to show his wrath and make his mighty power known has endured with much patience vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, right? That seems like he fitted these vessels for destruction. That was his plan. Uh, Alternatively, he has fitted these vessels for his glory and honor. That's heaven. That seems pretty cut and dry. Let's just end the conversation right there. But there's a few things that I want to point out is that the context of this verse is that God is this potter. And we've seen this metaphor before in the prophets. He's this potter, and you see him at the wheel, and the wheel is spinning, and he's got this lump of clay in his hands, and he's deciding what he's going to make out of this lump. He's either going to make a bowl, or he's going to start over and destroy uh, that what, what, what he has, and he's going to make something new. Now, the idea here is that it's all the same lump of clay, right? 
and he is forming and he is fashioning and he is creating, he's going to bring a pot out of that or he's going to get halfway through a pot and change his mind from our perspective and destroy that and start again. And the idea is that this passage is not saying that this is a finished work, that this is a finished deal. In fact, that word destruction in the Greek, apollyon, is... It's the same word used for, you know, when uh, when uh, the when Mary breaks the uh, her dowry and breaks that perfume on on Jesus. That it's the same word right there. Uh, the, that's the the destruction of that vase that was carrying the the perfume, and of course, something amazing and beautiful came out of that. And so the idea here is that just because God the Potter is at work and he's he's forming and fashioning for glory or for destruction doesn't mean that it's a done deal. The pot isn't a done deal until it goes into the kiln, right? That's when things become a done deal. Um, and so I don't even think this verse necessarily is talking about soteriology or salvation. I think this is talking about how God uses, how the hearts of man are in God's hands, and he is forming them and shaping them to do what he needs to do based on foreknowledge, the story that he's trying to tell. And deeper in the context, we have, you know, Pharaoh, whose heart was hardened and then hardened even harder to endure the plagues that God might tell the story he's trying to tell, which is that he is powerful enough to bring about these plagues to finally get to plague number 10, which is the death of the firstborn and the Passover, which would be foreshadowing Jesus, you know, for for millennia, right? He's telling a story here. Likewise, we have Jacob and Esau, right? Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. These are decisions that God made in humanity's time space to affect picking, choosing his people, Jacob, out of which would come Messiah, Jesus, because that's what the story's always been about, and that's what it's all about. It's all about Jesus. It's not even about Jacob. It's not even about Esau. It's not even about the lump of clay. It's not about you and me. It's ultimately about Jesus. So he has chosen, Jacob have I loved, Jacob, to bring forth the lineage that brings forth King David, that brings forth finally Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Now, this is enti- This does not mean that Jacob goes to heaven and Esau goes to hell. That's not what the story's about. We don't even know if Pharaoh, we don't know his eternal destiny. I think we can take a pretty good guess, but we don't know his eternal destiny. We just don't know. It's not in our minds to know. So if the question of this podcast is, does God predetermine people for hell? The answer is, we don't know. There's no way to know. And this passage that seems to conclusively say so, it's not even about that. It's about life here on earth. It's about God shaping our hearts to accomplish and tell the story that he finally wants to tell. And so, I mean, in the context of Romans 9 through 11 is... What about Israel? What about the blood Jews, right? We brought these Gentiles in, and that's what the verse kind of uh, implies at the end there in in verse 24, even us whom he has called not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles. He's brought in the Gentiles. He's darkened or blinded the eyes of the Jews, and there will be a day, in in my belief, teaching uh, coming out of Romans 11, there will be a day where that blindness will be lifted off, and Israel will be uh, the eyes of Israel will be open, and they will see that Jesus was their Messiah. Um, and so he's what he's doing right here is he's saying that he's taken some of the hearts of man, and he has destroyed them for a moment in order to bring the gospel through the, the Jews to the Gentiles, and that in his hands he is, um, he is molding and shaping us to live according to the story that he's trying to tell. And that's uh, kind of what I believe in. I'm not saying that hell isn't real. I think hell is a real place. You can listen to my podcast uh, called A Hell of a Doctrine uh, on that if you want some more information about hell. Um, But I I think that, you know, this is in the mind and the heart of God. And I think that the Bible is purposefully ambiguous on the subject. But we know that God is in control and he is sovereign. And he takes responsibility for all of his attributes, grace, graciousness, and wrath righteous anger. He's, 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 ha- he's content with his nature, and so we can rest and trust in him.